Baffin Bay is just this iconic Texas Bay system, really well known for its fishery. Everyone should care about Baffin, whether they're an angler or not, simply because it's a, a really unique system. Looks cloudy. Recently, yeah. we've had some tussles with water quality issues, things that are happening way upstream that we want to keep an eye on. Studies have identified it as being an incubator for the brown tide. The water quality issues, we don't want to have spillover into the rest of the upper Laguna Madre. Everything's intertwined. Taking care of the land is taking care of the water. You see what's being directly impacted, which is the fish, the seagrass beds, the bird community. If you care about the Laguna Madre and the wild Texas coast in general, we have to address the water quality issues in Baffin Bay. The mission of the Heart Research Institute is to study the Gulf of Mexico and address problems. Well, we're here because we're trying to document water quality conditions in Baffin Bay. We've been working with the community for the past 10 years to understand what the water quality problems are and now to find solutions to those water quality problems. Today we were out sampling a lot of different indicators that tell us how healthy the water quality is. So today we're making measurements of salinity. And I'll drop it in the water. How much dissolved oxygen there is, how salty the bay is, and how good a habitat it is for fish and seagrass. Temperature, 30.6. Dissolved oxygen percent, 80.4. We're looking at things like the amount of algae in the water. We'll drop instruments like a Secchi disc. Looks like an Oreo cookie. And that tells us how much light is making it down to the bottom for the seagrass beds. This appears about right there. 40 centimeters for a Secchi. And one of the issues we have here in Baffin Bay is too much algae growing in the water, so the light doesn't get down far enough for the seagrass at times, and then we have seagrass die-offs. From long-time anglers, we've heard a lot of great anecdotal information about what the bay used to be like. You used to have crystal clear water. You know, you used to be able to drop a lure in the water and you could see it almost down to the bottom. Now, the fishery was just incredible for its trophy trout. And then sometime in the 80s, the switch kind of flipped. Okay, let's start water collection. The water samples that we collect and all that data that we're getting, it helps us to really understand when and where we're having water quality issues. And that's really important because then that helps us to hone in on where we need to address those issues. We are here in Laguna Salada and we're going to do additional water testing here. Awesome, thank you. Good luck out there, Lucero. All right, see you in a bit. I have two sites that I sample out of out here and then one in Baffin Bay. There's a specific phytoplankton species known as the Texas Brown Tide. Studies have identified this certain section in this tributary as being an incubator for this species. The Brown Tide is a ecosystem disruptive species, so it causes a lot of ecological effects bad for the environment. I'm collecting water samples so that we can process the water, analyze the nutrients, and also determine the phytoplankton composition. There's a lot of phytoplankton in the water that can be harmful to the environment and the humans around it. And we want to be able to hopefully catch these instances before they become a much larger issue. It's just, you know, me and the kayak. Depending on the weather, it can be harsh because it is, you know, humid and hot out here. <sighs> so tired. I'm more driven by trying to make a change, and that starts off with learning about our environment and the science that we're doing back at HRI.
water samples that we bring back. We analyze for a lot of different chemicals, as well as looking at the types of algae that are down there in the water. This is a piece of a serpulid reef found throughout Baffin Bay, and it's one of the few places in the world that we find reefs like this. Although serpulid worms build the reefs, other fauna live on the reefs, feed upon the reefs, breed within the reefs. You can look at one small couple of centimeter piece of reef and find just thousands and thousands of other creatures. They play such an important role in the bay in general because of just how much life they support there. What it looks like is that the reefs are shrinking and degrading. So we need to get a better grasp on the current extent of those reefs and how to move forward with restoring them. My name is Ethan Getz. I'm the ecosystem leader for the Upper Laguna Madre team, part of the Coastal Fisheries Division of Texas Parks and Wildlife. Our task is to do the routine monitoring of our bays to keep track of fisheries. So we collect fisheries data to get a gauge of all the different species that are out there and what anglers like to catch. So we've got our bag same here. We stretch it out 50 feet. We want to make sure we're doing it the exact same way so that all the data is comparable through time. Are you ready? Good to go, Ethan. All right, let's do it. Bag seines, that helps us get data on juvenile fishes and some bait fish species. Let's see what we've got in here. Oh, we've got a juvenile black drum here. Just a little guy, but he'll grow up to be a lot bigger. We've got a mullet snapping shrimp. A little blue crab. Length is going to be 55. Okay. All right, what other species do we have? Boy. And then the bay trawls, we conduct those in a little bit deeper water. All right, head to point. We'll go for 10 minutes, dragging that along the bottom, and we'll see what we catch. We're picking up a lot of shrimp um, and other bait fish. Our monitoring programs have been around a long, long time. We can see whether populations are on the increase or decrease, and with that data, we make regulation changes. Had some issues with, with nutrient runoffs into the bay. This one is 272. In general, the fish populations still seem to be really healthy despite some of those issues, but it's the things we really want to keep an eye on to make sure the sustainability of Baffin is kept in check. What we've learned about the causes of the water quality degradation, it essentially goes back to things that we're doing on the lands around the bay. There's been a lot of really sophisticated source tracking lately, looking at pollution sources. And surprisingly, there's a big contribution from sewage. So failing wastewater treatment plants and septic tanks. But we also see contributions from ag, as well as stormwater runoff. This is a million and a half acre watershed. A lot of people don't recognize that what they do on their land will affect the bait. We're in the middle of Clayburg County. My wife grew up down here, but we really wanted to raise our family down here. It's beautiful. We're in ranching, we're in the business of making money on beef, but we also want to use cattle to create the best habitat. We're going to be here for a long time, and we can't do something that's going to have a short-term benefit. We're building back these grasses then you're going to filter out any of the impurities that might flow into that water from a highway or from any kind of urbanization that might trickle its way through your property. Because as it flows off of our land, it's going to make its way into the bay and into those public waters. Ranchers, farmers, we're the first line of defense cleaning that water as it moves out to those bigger bodies of water. started to figure out what some of the challenges are. So we have pulled together a group of community members. It's called the Baffin Bay Stakeholder Group. We started off in 2018 with about 10 people in a room, and we have close to 300 community members on that stakeholder group now. Our hope 
for bringing Baffin back is that it starts to turn back time and brings Baffin back to the way it used to be 20, 30, 40 years ago. The Watershed Protection Plan is basically a guidebook for how to fix the bay. Taking care of the land is taking care of the water. We feel lucky to be able to work here and at least look after the fisheries. Um, we know that's so valuable to so many people. It gives us a lot of pride to be a part of keeping Baffin in the best shape possible. It makes me appreciate Baffin Bay, but also the communities that are directly impacted. This is going to be a long-term program, working with the cities and counties to address their wastewater infrastructure, bringing resources to landowners to fix their septic tanks, for example. We're working with the community to start implementing those solutions. Education, I think, is key.